how long were you a POW then? So I was uh, about seven months. Did you get letters and stuff from home then, or did they keep your mail? Uh, the, the Red Cross supposedly made arrangements to the, that uh, you know, our families could correspond with us, but I never got any. Mm. I probably wasn't. Uh, see, they moved us around a lot. Mm -hmm. They moved us from one camp to another as the, as the uh, Russians would close in on them while they'd move us back to uh, get us away from the front lines, move us back to a safer haven where they could, you know, take guard us. Yeah. You might want to talk about uh, what you had to eat and drink. And that's oh, kind of yeah. Uh, I don't want to do your job. Our me. meals. I know the sense of the story. Right. The story or thing. Our meals were pretty much, you could, you could uh, depend on them being the same every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they would uh, they'd feed us. In the morning, they'd bring us into our compound a, a wooden barrel with the, the uh, they had what they called tea. I don't know what it was, <laughs> it was some discolored water, and it was lukewarm. And they'd bring it in there on a stone boat, and pulled by a horse. And, oh, wow. And uh, we'd go there and dip out a canteen cup full of tea. And then in the afternoon, they would bring us uh, uh, a boiled potato, just a medium-sized boiled potato, and a piece of dark uh, bread, and, and, a, and a cube of margarine. And on rare occasions, we'd get a little piece of sausage. But that didn't happen too often. Mm -hmm. They were pretty stingy with that sausage. Well, tell them what they did with the tea most of the time. You said in the morning, the guys would, they wouldn't drink the tea. And you use it for shaving. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was, it was warm, and, you know, lukewarm. <laughs> So that's all you got all day is the tea in the morning and the potato <laughs> and bread in the afternoon and sometimes the sausage. That's right. Once a day we got the tea and once a day wow. we got that potato and, and a piece of bread. And you were just about as hungry as you were when you after you ate it as you were before you ate it. But I guess they were, the, you know, we had enough to live on. It kept us alive and. I guess you don't think of foolishness and trying to escape or something if you're, if you're hungry. Mm. Did you lose weight then? You know, people ask me that, and I really can't answer that. I, I don't, I, I don't recollect losing a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. But I, I probably, did, probably lost a, quite a bit though, because you know you, you had a pretty meager, meager ration. But I, I really can't uh, put a finger on how, how much weight I lost. Right. Well, let's see. Well, let's see, they, they housed me in that, uh, I told you that, that in the in a American POW camp. And I was there until uh, we could, uh, the, the Soviets were closing in on them. Mm -hmm. uh, we, could, we could hear the gunfire. Wow. 
we, <clears throat> we could hear the gunfire and we could see the flashes in the night sky you know, where the artillery, artillery was exploding and uh, so they decided to move us. They loaded us up in a, a box cars. Uh, I don't. I can't remember how many uh, how many men were in a car, but uh, they led us into those cars, and uh, they had a little straw on the floor, and, uh, and they and they moved us during the day, and we we landed up, we ended up in Berlin. Now was this, do you know about what month this would have been? Would it have been winter, summer? Well, it was uh, late fall. Mm, okay. So it wasn't so cold yet, right? No, it wasn't bitter cold. It wasn't, uh, that country didn't get quite as cold as we do over here. Right. Yeah, I think it was a little more modest. Mm. A little more modest temperatures than what we have here. But anyway, they loaded us up in those cars. They had a little uh, little uh, slit cut near the ceiling of the car for air, and they had it laced with with uh, barbed wire. Oh, wow. Was there enough room to sit down, or were you all standing? You could sit down, okay. yes. Uh, there was no, if you had to relieve yourself, you just went in the co corner of the car and you did the best you could. Oh, and we, uh, they moved us in, uh, into Berlin and we stayed, stayed in those, uh, they parked us on a siding, the train parked on a siding and they, they, uh, we stayed in that in those cars all night. They didn't nothing. They didn't feed us or, or give us any water. But the next morning, they uh, they they came and unlocked the cars. They had us padlocked in there, and. Uh, They, uh, they uh, unlocked the cars and when we opened the doors, here was a, a, a German guard. He was he was he was dressed in a new uniform and new black boots, and he, he looked great. And I suppose that was to intimidate us. Right. And they, they each had a dog with them, and they unloaded us out of there and marched us a short distance to a, to another compound. And, and this was this was a kind of a temporary situation for them. The uh, the compound was if just a fenced-in enclosure, and there was there was uh, tents, uh, huge tents, 400 men to a tent. Oh wow! And they that was our quarters, and we had straw on the floor for mattress. The I remember the uh, the uh, lice. We had head lice. They, they were they were terrible. Our, our conditions weren't weren't the best. And 
then uh, we stayed in there for I don't remember for sure probably a couple of months in that temporary quarters wow and what were they feeding you by this time what were they what what were they feeding you now was it the same thing same thing oh, uh, wow. that, that never changed <laughs> we, you could you could <laughs> You could know what you're going to get every day. <laughs> and then they uh, we were we were in that compound till the, till the New Year's Eve, 1944. We come in there with New Year's Eve about eight o'clock and said, we're leaving. He said, gather up what you've got and we're not coming back. So they fell us out and we stood out there for hours, seems like they would count us and they would go back in and check, you know, <sighs> be sure everybody was out and that went on till about midnight. Oh my gosh. And they, uh, we they put us on a road, uh, on a, on an autobahn. G German autobahn was the same as our, pretty much like our interstates here. Right. They fell us out there and, and down the road we went. And we, like we, walking, we, you mean? We or? walking. Okay. And we walked all that uh, rest of, rest of that night. And, uh, and, all, and all the next day, uh, they they let us stop periodically. You know, of course, they were they had guards on on both sides of us on the on both sides of the road, mm -hmm. and uh, they would they would change guards and they'd let us stop, get get our breath and. And uh, we we walked uh, at night. This not the first night. We walked first night. The second night, we stopped in a little village. They, you know, over there. The farmers uh, lived in this little village, and their farms were all on on the outskirts of the town. Okay. And they they. Uh, Brought us into this little village, and uh, we got our. They fed us that night. Uh, gave us our piece of bread and our our turnip soup. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they put us up in this in this uh, far in this village. In the, what was the, the villages that the farmer had his house, and then he had his barn where he had his cow, and he had another shed or under the same roof where he kept his pig and his chickens. And they, they put us up in those barns. I don't know how they... Uh, uh, kept track of us there, but they did, because <laughs> we were scattered out up and down that street there. Uh, during the early evening, a German housewife, she'd come out there with a tea kettle full of hot water. Uh, I suppose if any of us had any coffee, you know, <laughs> or, uh, you know, instant coffee or stuff, we could have made us some coffee. But, and I, and I suppose she took her life in her hands doing what she did, but she was pretty accommodating. And next, and the, the, uh, the old farmer, had a, he was feeding his cow, he had a milk cow there, and he was feeding it sugar beets. So we managed to swipe some sugar beets and uh, 
put them in our carried them in our pockets the best we could so they weren't visible and and uh, we ate the, we ate those sugar beets. How did those taste after so many? <laughs> Ter terrible. <laughs> they weren't very palatable, but it was food. All <laughs> right. And the, you couldn't you couldn't sleep. The cow was eating all night, and the pig was a grunting. And the, <laughs> and the, you know, but it was we were undercover. It was winter time. Right. There's the snow on the ground and. Uh, and we marched, uh, that was the first night, and then we marched uh, uh, six, six more days. We didn't, mar they put us up at night, they didn't march us at night after that. Mm. But they marched us for six more days till we come to this uh, other camp. That, that was our that was our uh, well that was our last and final camp that we were in.